This video will demonstrate how to use ArcGIS Pro to publish features to web scenes in ArcGIS Online. We're going to be using the 3D massings from the Toronto Open Data Catalog. So that can be searched for um, in this filter box. And once the 3D massing page has been loaded, we're going to um, download this 3D massing multi-patch WGS84. So I've already downloaded that and unzipped it to a folder. Now we're going to launch ArcGIS Pro to load it into a new um, scene. So once Pro is launched, there is a template play pane on the right side here. And we're going to choose Global Scene. So once the globe has been loaded here in our scene, um, we're going to connect to that downloads folder. So on the left here, downloads, we have our multi patch folder. Click OK to add that folder connection. And now we can browse to that file due database and, and look inside. And you'll see that the data is split up into east, north, south, and west feature data sets. And each of those have different patches um, for different areas across Toronto. And you can actually load this context tiles. Uh, polygon layer into the map and get an idea of how the area of Toronto is split up into these different uh, patches. And it's kind of hard to see where this is in Toronto because you don't you can't see through the tiles to get the street information. So you can go to the uh, appearance tab and use this slider here to increase the transparency of that layer. Now we can see the streets under it. So this layer is used to figure out which patch uh, we're going to publish. So you might choose a different area in Toronto, but I'm going to pick one near our office, which is this tile right here. If I click on it, I see the tile name is 54L. So since that's, since that's in the north side of Toronto, I can open up the north feature data set and look for 54L, multi-patch 54L, and drag that to the 3D layers part of the contents pane. I can turn off and uh, remove this contents tiles because I no longer need that. This multi-patch um, layer won't appear until we change the elevation properties. So right click on the layer, click properties, go to the elevation part and um, change this to on the ground. So now when we zoom in, we should be able to see our buildings. Great, so you can see them right there by going a little further. So there's a few more steps we need to do before we can publish this as a web scene. Uh, the first is those heights are now kind of done dynamically based on the World Elevation Service but they're not yet saved to the layer. And that's something we need to do in a separate step. So if you click on analysis up here at the top and then click tools, we're gonna run a geoprocessing tool which saves those elevation values to a new feature class. So search for 3D layer. And the first uh, result here, 3D layer feature class, what we, what we need. So our input feature class, our feature layer is that um, multi-patch layer. And we can run this. And we'll get an identical layer uh, with the height values now saved. So I'm going to take the old multi-patch and remove that from the, the scene. So one last thing before we publish it is I want to add some attributes to this layer. Because right now if I open up the attribute table, you'll see no attributes um, or fields exist. So I'm going to add three. Uh, the first is called min z. That is a float. Then I'll add max z, also a float. And finally, height. I'll 
also a float. So up at the top here, you click save to save those fields. Now we're gonna calculate um, the min z and max z based off the geometry, and then use those to calculate our, our attribute that we ultimately want to visualize based on, which is height. So you can right click on the field and then click calculate geometry. And this panel here is where we can calculate the actual um, values. So min z, we're gonna choose minimum z coordinate run that and you should see once that's done these min z values fill in here um, we're going to run the same tool but for max z so now we just change the property to maximum z coordinate and now you should see the once this is done the values filled in now the last step is to calculate the um, value for the height. So we're going to do um, calculate field. And for this, we're going to do a, a subtraction. So we're going to take the max z and subtract off the min z to get the height. So run that tool and make sure that the height values have been filled in. And you can um, double click here to sort by height. So now that that's done, um, we're ready to publish this to our web scene. So if you click on the share tab at the top, there's this option, share as web scene. So I'm gonna name that Toronto Buildings. add some tags here and a summary quick analyze to make sure that um, there's no warnings and finally you can click share so once that's done there's a link to click on to go to ArcGIS Online once we're in ArcGIS Online we can um, click open in scene viewer this blue button on the top right to now go and edit that scene and so here we can see our buildings loaded in ArcGIS online it's kind of hard to see them so I can click on this icon on the right to change the base map now they're a lot more visible there's some other options available like change the time of day or time of year turn on and off shadows and this measure tool um, which if you hovered over the train you can actually see the contour lines where there's equal elevation and if I zoom into a building I click the top of the building down to the ground um, you can see it gives you a vertical height of 64 meters we can actually go and close this tool, click on the building to bring up the attributes that we calculated. And we can see here that we also got a value of 64 meters. So the measurement um, was accurate. On the left here, you can go and modify the look of the layer. So here's our layer that we published. You can click on these three dots and then click configure layer. And right now these are all just white. We want to color them by um, the attribute that we calculated, so our height attribute. So I'm gonna click this drop down, click height. And if I zoom out, we can see the darker red for the taller buildings. And you can see kind of here on the legend um, that height. Um, what the actual value is. Now if you go and click options, um, you can see right now it's set dark red is just greater than 13, so we're not getting much uh, variation in the colors there. But if we go and 
take this slider and drag it up. Um, now we're going to see some more variation among the taller buildings. So down here you also have uh, transparency you can change on the buildings. So I'll just leave it semi-transparent. Um, I should also mention the colors here, right under the um, slider. You can change that, so I can make it, for example, an orange color. And uh, one thing that's neat is uh, this option to turn on edges. So that adds a lot of definition to these buildings. If I zoom in here, um, we're now able to see windows on this building, whereas before, if I turn it off, they're just not visible. And there are some styles you can change. So you have a sketch style, which adds some wavy lines to the edges. You can change it from dark or make it light, and then change the weight of the lines. So I'll make it go back to dark and save that. Click done. Another option here is to add um, slides. So you can think of these as 3D bookmarks that's going to save the view of the camera. So I create one right here and make another one up at the top. And what's interesting is these, these um, slides actually save your base map. Um, configuration. So I click on Topo and capture that slide. You can see there the um, base map has changed. So going back to this slide, once I click Done, these two slides appear at the bottom. You can toggle between the two and you'll see that it actually changes um, the base map. So now that we made those changes, we can click Save Scene. And right now it's only shared with myself, so I haven't actually made this publicly available, but you can do that by clicking on this share button on the right. And there is a little warning here that says this scene is not shared, but you can change share settings. So clicking on that brings you back to your item page in ArcGIS Online. And then you need to click on this share button on the right, select everyone and then click OK. And the share button uh, is right down here. You click on that, you'll get the link to share with other people. For more information about web scenes and 3D GIS, you can find links in the description to videos from Esri, as well as a BIM to GIS workflow video from Esri Canada.